What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. I'd just like to thank everyone out there for the overwhelming support recently, and mostly for the video on me making all of the Kanto Pokémon dual-typed. Honestly, I kind of thought it was a throwaway idea, but it seems like a lot of people liked it, and the enthusiasm has really helped out. Hordes of people have also said that they would want to see it continue on, so let's do the same thing for the Johto region. And just as a reminder, or for those who didn't see before, we are only looking at the Pokémon's current design and lore to figure out what else they might be if they had to become a second type. And then we'll rate how likely this outcome would actually be. Now we see the Johto region is made up of 51% single-typed Pokémon, which in this case just means there are 51 single-typed Pokémon. But I guess that's to be expected when all of your starters are a single-type as well. So obviously we begin with the Grass-type Chikorita line, which starts as a walking pear and ends up as a flowering dinosaur. But I know what you're thinking, and I'm actually going to go with the Fairy-type. Bayleaf is a little more rugged, but these Pokémon are made to be the very definition of gentle. And it's said that their aromas are able to soothe others with a calming spirit, and even bring some plants back to life. I don't know about you, but that sounds mysterious enough for me to sign off on the fairy typing for these starters. I'd give it a solid two stars. The Cyndaquil line is of course pure fire, and I had a bit of a harder time, but I'm going with normal. Now I know nobody wants their favorite starter to become a lame normal type, but hear me out. They're not earthen enough to be ground, and even though they can get some fighting moves, I don't feel like they have the impressive muscle to pull off the type. It's not an insult to say that these Pokémon are simple mammals, and I think that I'd give it at least two stars as well. And of course, the last starter, Totodile, is the water type, but I would give this family the dragon typing. I know some people thought I was a bit liberal in my dragon assignments last time, but come on. These powerful gators clearly have the proper qualities befitting that type. It might not be ideal to have the starters Water Dragon when that's the only other Dragon type in the region, but at least it doesn't change the effectiveness between starters since we already gave Meganium the Fairy typing, so it all still works out. I'd give this setup a good two and a half stars. And the very next Pokémon is the Stripey, Centret, and Furret, and I'm gonna do it! They get the Ground type as well. I know I did this with the regional rodent last time, but I think it's more fitting here, since Centret is vaguely based on a prairie dog alerting the pack, and is very close to the Earth. So it is only a one star because they don't need it, but it's a solid one star. Then we come to Hutut, who is the first dual type in all of Johto, and we jump through some of the others all the way down to Pichu. Now here I will give the fairy type. Some people said that Pikachu itself should have been fairy, given its egg group and some other things, but I think it's far more applicable here. Pichu being a baby Pokémon is more connected to eggs and breeding, and Pichu actually gets some fairy moves in its level-up moveset when Pikachu does not. So I'd give this one two stars better than the rest of its line. And right after that we see the baby Cleffa, and just like its relatives from last time, it's just a no-brainer to give it back the normal typing that it used to have anyway. It doesn't really have a downside, it just gives an immunity to Ghost, so why not make it like Iglybuff? And also, Togepi could have this? I always forget that Togepi is pure fairy, since its evolutions are still dual-typed, I just assume that Togepi is still part normal. And honestly, I think they should all have two types, so I'll give it three stars. The next line is the Marit family, which I will give normal. And I'm sure people will say, Fairy! But you gotta understand, just because something is cute, or pink even, doesn't mean slapping Fairy on it makes sense. Plus, we're gonna have plenty more of that later on, trust me. The Ampharos line doesn't even get a single Fairy-type move, ever. And I'm still not convinced about the dragon typing from the Mega, so simply having these respectable sheep be normal, I think is worth at least one star. We then come to Bellossum, and this branched evolution actually lost the poison typing that the rest of its line has. But that's probably okay, because there's not really much poison about it. So I will say the fairy type could work here. Not only does it seem fitting for the emphasis on happy dancing, 
but it would provide an interesting relationship to the poison on the other side as well, so I'll give it two stars. Now we have Sudowoodo, which I would make a grass type. Now hold on, I know the point of this stone tree is to be a fake out, but if I had to give it a second type, I think grass would be warranted. It could still have the hard density of rock and actually be petrified wood, and really as many weaknesses as grass and rock hold individually, together they have less weaknesses than before. So it's a shame that we don't see this impressive type combination more, so I'll give it two and a half stars. There's also Politoed, who I will carry over from the previous entries in its evolutions and bring on the psychic typing. It might be the least likely with Politoed since its hypnotic powers would be diminished compared to them, but it makes another great opposition between branched evolutions, so I'll give it at least one star. I really love Apom, and I think after narrowing it down, the fairy type could be the best. This charismatic little ape could absolutely be imbued with a mystical spirit, and I could definitely see it whooping down on some dragon types, so I would love to see it at two stars. Now we see one of the most forgettable and underwhelming Pokemon lines with Sunkern and Sunflora. But I think we could fix that if we give it the fire type. Some might scratch their heads, but these Pokemon are based on sunflowers, and the sun is just a big ball of fire. The designs themselves might not reflect this, but the sheer fact that it would finally give us a grass and fire type earns that one star. Next are the wonderful Eeveelutions, and while I gave the last ones normal, this time I would make Espeon a fairy type. It's graceful enough and has access to some of those moves. However, this is mostly to create an even bigger rivalry between it and Umbreon, who I would make a dual poison type. The Pokédex has long told tales about Umbreon's poisonous sweat, so honestly, why isn't it one already? Poison and Dark is a great typing, and would make it doubly effective to beat a Fairy Espeon. So while the first one is middling, Umbreon would be even better with this type added. Next we see the only natural ghost type in Johto, and the first pure ghost ever with Mistrevis, but let's ruin that by adding the flying type. This wavy bundle of ectoplasm is always depicted as levitating in the air, and it actually has the levitate ability, but we can just change it to be a flying type and give it a couple of new abilities to play around with. Plus, we kind of needed to add the flying type somewhere, right? It's probably worth at least one and a half stars. Now, the unknown were pretty tough. They're almost a thing all to themselves, but Psychic is alright. I thought maybe normal, since they're just letters, but I think maybe Ghost could work, since they are in fact remnants of a lost civilization. And another Ghost type couldn't hurt in the region. Yeah, that's if we had to, but it's probably better off staying as it is. Next is another pure Psychic type with Wobbuffet, but for this punching bag, I think the Dark type could work. It's actually a little creepy that it fits so well. After all, it is a theory that its tail is the real being, so tricky tactics like that means the dark type should be at least one star. I almost forgot about Pineco, but unlike its evolution, it is a pure bug type. So what if we add grass? Again, I know the idea is that it's not grass on purpose and is a bagworm, but it's also literally a pine cone, so I think it would be fine for one star. And if you're worried that shifting to a steel type is too much change, I offer you the Scyther evolution. Now, I already know people will say Dunspar should be a dragon, but nah. This chubby snake is all 100% ground type. It's got a tail drill specifically for digging its way through the earth. So I will give three shining stars to this questionable amalgam of parts being a ground Pokemon. Again, we see Snubble as another shift to pure fairy, so let's just put that normal type back on. But I'm going a different direction for Granbull. I think this wild dog could get away with gaining the fighting type. This would in fact be the first fairy and fighting type ever, and would also be the first Pokemon to have three different types in the same form over the years, which would really be something for these overlooked Johto Pokemon. Two stars. Teddy, Ursa, and Ursaring are more normal types, but I think they could also gain the fighting type pretty convincingly. Well, maybe Teddy Ursa might need some convincing, but there's not exactly a honey type. However, Ursaring is certainly ferocious enough to make it, and it doesn't hurt that they already get some seriously powerful fighting attacks, so let's get some stab on that action and give it two stars. And right after that, we see Slugma, 
Now the temptation is probably to just make it a rock type like Mag Cargo. After all, Magma is just molten rock. But I think I'm going with the bug type to lean more into its slug half of the inspiration. And as we said last time, you've got to get the bug in where you can, otherwise it'll just be disregarded. Next is the Rimmeraid line, and I would dive right in and give them the Steel type. This of course is because of their firepower origins. It would work a lot better if they had kept their beta designs, but I still think they could have some claim to the cold steel they deserve, for at least one star. I absolutely adore Fanpy and Dawnfan, but it was pretty hard to find a suitable type, since they are so completely ground. But I think Rock could sneak in enough to make sure we know how durable they are when they roll around and smash into everything, so I would give that one star. Porygon 2 is next, and I'm doubling down on the Steel type. Many people said Porygon 2 should be an electric type due to it being made out of code. Trying to explain it to me like I haven't been obsessed with Digimon for the last 20 years. I get it, I do, but it's not code anymore. It's real, it's here, it's out, and they had to use something to 3D print it, right? Ideally, yes, the Porygon line would be electric and steel. There's nothing normal about it. But since we're not changing any existing types, I've got to go with the tangible option. And again, giving us a combination that we don't yet have is worth the three stars. Stantler should absolutely be a psychic type. It's been shown time and again that its horns have reality warping powers, so it only makes sense. The only reason I'm giving it two stars instead of three is because this generation already has Girafferig as the normal and psychic quadruped with hooves and antlers. So really anywhere else, Stantler would be higher, but we don't want it to clash. Next is Smeargle, whose painting antics make me think of the fairy type. Not just because of Mina, but really what else would you do with magic paint? It's not the worst, but I will concede that it probably shouldn't be more than half a star. After that, we come to Tyrogue, which I don't see as anything besides normal, especially since it's a baby and should be less complex. I would not recommend changing this tiny scrapper. However, its new evolution, Hitmon Top, I could actually see becoming a ground type. It's firmly planted on the ground, whether on its feet or its head. This spinning top could indeed tap into the earth for a little boost. Maybe even spin fast enough to drill like Dunsparce. I would rate this one better than its other forms with at least one and a half stars. The other baby Pokemon, Elekid and Magby, are here too, and I will simply reiterate what I said for their Gen 1 relatives and give Elekid fighting and Magby poison. This is pretty believable for two stars with Elekid's honking fists, but less relatable than before for Magby, so just one star there. And one of the most hated Pokemon around, Miltank, was quite a challenge, but I'm leaning towards Rock for much of the same reason as Dawnfan with its pronounced rolling maneuvers. However, the last thing we need is to power up its rollout, so I'd say not at all on this one. But Blissey is the exact opposite because like last time, it should be a fairy type. It's the very essence of what a fairy should be. Kind, compassionate, healing. The fact that it's not simply due to potential competitive balancing is absurd, so three stars for me. And then we come to the legendary beasts of the Johto region who are all a single type. The first, and my favorite, Raikou, is an amazing electric type. But if I had to give it one more, it would be the dark type. I realize dark is not literal in this regard, however Raikou is basically an oncoming storm. So if anything were to denote that intensity, it would be dark. Now this is where it gets harder with Entei. Because I thought maybe fighting could work if I gave Suicune Psychic so that they could form a type effectiveness triangle between them all, but it doesn't exactly fit. So I'm going to go with Rock for Entei since it is the Volcano Pokemon and has those protrusions on its back, and Suicune will get the Ice typing. It is the Aurora Pokemon and said to be the Spirit of the North Wind. Plus its Pokémon moveset is almost exclusively ice based, so I think it could be our solo ice type addition this round, and gain an outstanding 3 stars, as it probably should have been ice anyway. Raikou can get a solid 2 stars, but Entei's isn't nearly as persuasive at half a star. So those are all the Pokémon that were a single type in the Johto region. 
It's interesting how things change from one to another, and how some types who were barely there last time seem to fit a different region so perfectly, and vice versa. I will be quite interested to see where this leads in future generations as well. What do you think of the new dual-type Johto Pokémon? Which types would you choose? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!